It stands in the shadows of downtown Minneapolis, an institution that has stood here as a symbol. Changed over the years a bit, but remained a constant in what it was when it was founded. Started with a philosophy from Charles Prosser, a philosophy that has stood the test of time. Charles Prosser, the father of vocational education. 1915 to 45. Yeah, at Dunwoody. And then I'm also learning about what was then called the William Hood Dunwoody Industrial Institute, the birthplace of vocational education. What they want are students that want it. What makes it interesting is that identifying the boy or girl with the star future is not predicted on the past. The people that are successful at Dunwoody weren't always successful in high school. Some of these kids, you know, the, the theory-based learning where you sit yeah. in a classroom and someone talks at you for an hour, um, that, that isn't it doesn't their resonate. Way. Huh? It doesn't resonate. So the hands-on learning, seeing a kid that maybe was oh, a C man. or D student in high school come here and be a, an incredible student and get the top job out of his class. That's what happened in some respects to the president of Dunwoody. Before he earned a PhD, he found himself in the Navy. Instead of going into a class of 700 in a calc class and learning about what happens when you integrate a volume and, and the denominator approaches infinity or zero and, and my head's exploding, it was, here's an application of Ohm's Law, here's a theory of Ohm's Law, here's an application. Now go do it. Mm -hmm. Go hands on do yep. it, right? And and that resonated that somehow. Uh, yep. me. And, and and all of a sudden I went from a kid who didn't make it at college uh, to a, to a student that was an honor student, basic electricity electronics. What has evolved is his leadership and the evolution of an institution that mirrors a society. Figure out what's trending and make sure you offer something, something that the marketplace wants. That's where it becomes both simple and ingenious. The technology is you know, so totally changed uh, in the way somebody has to approach the way a vehicle, you know, is repaired. Because before, if a car didn't start, you looked at fuel, you looked at ignition, and a couple other things. Now there's maybe 30 different reasons. So you prepare the men and women for a marketplace that keeps moving. And you inspire them, not just to want to find a job, but to find a dream. And that's even more powerful than a paycheck. How much do you try to create an environment where you encourage them to not just master the skill, but to, as you mentioned, own a business, be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Uh, first, we're going to teach you how to master the skill, but we want you to think bigger than that. Yeah. So what I, it starts as their freshman orientation, because I challenge them on, on that exact point. I tell them names like, when you drive down 394 and you see all the Maury's automotive signs, mm. Maury Wagner, 1957 graduate of Dunwoody. That's what became of Ray Newkirk. He attended Dunwoody, got a job, then created a business, a very successful business. I was always interested in making things. And uh, someone told me that the ultimate place to go was to Dunwoody to get the right education. There is a pride about the alumni that they have been here to build the town. Our alumni have pretty much built the Twin Cities. Um, Target Field for example. Mm -hmm. General contractor there was Mortensen Construction. Right. Mort Mortensen graduated from Dunwoody in 1925. Is that right? Yeah. Then you look down at all the contractors that worked in sure. Target Field, right? Kind of fun to keep up. Yes. So what do we estimate? 60 to 70 percent of those contracting firms that worked on Target Field were started, currently owned, or currently run by Dunwoody alumni. That's become a bit of the secret sauce. Market the dream to your students by marketing your alums. What do you use as a tool to motivate these kids then to think big? How do you inspire them? What do you do to say, look, this isn't just about your first job, this is about a lifetime? We are really fortunate. We've been teaching machine tools and welding since 1914. We've been teaching those programs for 100 years. We have some alumni out there that have done incredible things. The people that Dunwoody produces, and we call it the product of Dunwoody, is extremely high because the standards are set. And again, that goes back to the culture that Dunwoody has. And you do that by employing a faculty that is already in play. The teachers are in the marketplace, so the men and women of Dunwoody are not just trying to achieve in their classrooms, they're trying to impress a possible reference. We got a company up in Fridley, uh, E.J. Ajax and Sons. This company, in order to get the top guy each year, he hires him as an intern over the summer, pays him, and then what he does is he helps pay for their second year school. You know, the idea is that he'll hook them and keep them, yep. um, but he doesn't even make a contract with it. He says, if I treat you right, I know you're you going to stay back. with my company. But what drives the institution is also an attitude, the one the president carries, where he wears his pride on his sleeve. You have a great passion that shows through. 
for this institution and the kids that you serve. And I think that that passion comes from my story. If it wasn't for this type of education, who knows where my life goes. Because here, the men and women are allowed to nourish what all people want, an opportunity. Like Kathy Hine. One of the same stories I kept hearing uh, from people who were seeking assistance from the church or just being about the neighborhood was, you know, any place where I can get my car repaired cheap. She had a vision to make a difference in people's lives by serving her community. So after Dunwoody, she opened a nonprofit auto repair shop. Dunwoody was a lifesaver for me. And I can speak to what Dunwoody did for me, which was supported me at every step of the way. I, I knew not a thing about cars. And when they knew what my vision was, they were so on board and so supportive from day one. And all of the instructors said, I will see you walk across that stage. You know, whatever I need to do to help you make that, I will do it. And that was a huge gift to me. And I say with great confidence that I wouldn't have finished that program without that kind of support from those instructors at Dunwoody. Because what they hope they take with is not just a career, but a lifestyle. One that will satisfy for years to come. My primary reason for going into business for myself was because I could pick whatever work I wanted to do and do what I called the fun stuff. And today, 50 years later, we're still doing the fun stuff. And one wonders, what would the namesake say if he could see it today? What would he say today if he came and looked at this? I think today he would say he's very proud of what we've done. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.